Okay, thank you. That was the first analyst. Uh, the second uh, sits uh, next to you, um, Dr. Ehat um, uh, Farah. And I'm um, uh, very interested in your views. Can you please also explain a bit about your history and what you're doing today? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> first, just a few words about the, uh, the Arab sector, just continuing on what Itzik said. Uh, for those who don't know, there's a 20% Arab minority inside Israel. Uh, this minority economically is not in the, um, represented in terms, as it is in terms of the population. In other words, if I can rephrase, the Arab minority in Israel is overrepresented when it comes to the negative parameters. Like, for example, they represent only 13% of the workforce, and when it comes to uh, those who live under the line of poverty, it's over 40%. But when, it, when we look at the uh, positive parameters, like how much are, um, uh, are, how many of the Arab, uh, uh, members of the Arab minority are in the high-tech sector, for example, it's less than 3%. Um, if we look at the uh, percentage of the contribution to Israel's GDP, it's less than 8%, and we're talking about a 20% 20 uh, of the population. This at some point created a, um, the idea of the fund that I'm a partner with, which is called Al Bawadir. It was established in 2010 uh, with the idea of, uh, we're talking about cloning, cloning what happened in Israel in the early 90s, uh, the Yozma, where the government said to venture capital funds like Pitango and the others, we're going to match up to certain amounts of government funding, you go and create the height of the, the startup nation. And that's how these funds began their way, using government uh, money, and then from, from Fund 2 and so forth, they began uh, um, raising capital without the need to, to, of, of, the, of the government funding. Well, this, this idea was presented to the government in 2010 to create a fund, basically, that's focused on investing in the Arab minority of Israel. And... Um, it took, uh, it took some uh, attraction, and, then, and uh, the government committed 80 million shekels. And um, Pitango, who won the tender, was able to raise another roughly 100 million shekels. So we have a $50 million fund focused on investing in the Arab minority in Israel. Uh, we've made seven investments up until now. And um, uh, I think the idea itself was... was you know, it was a great idea. Hopefully, we're looking to see this trend continue. You know, um, funds like Taqueen have been created afterwards, and, and, and hopefully this trend is, is, will continue in the future. Um, in, in terms of my background, uh, just very quickly, I'm a lawyer, and have, but uh, I, I practiced for 10 years in Israel and then moved to the United States where I went uh, through the uh, corporate tax program at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, studied for a second degree and wrote a doctorate thesis, worked a lot with venture capital funds, representing them in the U.S., which is where the connection comes, and uh, had the opportunity when I decided to move back, really to find my way into the uh, into El Boader. Now, just to be clear, it's a for-profit fund. I mean, the, the, the mission at the end of the day is to generate revenues for the investors. But, but, you know, you have, beside the mission, you have also a vision where we're, we're trying to uh, create a situation where the Arab minority in Israel is part of the startup nation. And uh, so if, if you can make profit and at the same time have a social impact, that's, you know, win-win from our perspective. In terms of rocket internet, um, I think I, I, I agree, totally agree with what Itzik's saying in terms of the cloning. I, I you know, I've, I know them from outlet media reports. Uh, definitely they're doing a good job, and I guess a lot of investors think they are because they're, <laughs> they're able to raise so, so much money. But the cloning, I think, is, is, um, is, is the localization when it comes to cloning is a very important factor. I agree with Itzik. Uh, in terms of what we've, what we've seen, you know, we, we, it just so happened that we identified a need in the Arab-speaking market, in the MENA market, which uh, has over 350 million Arabic speakers, and um, uh, over 100, 120 million are now connected to the Internet. And what we've, we've been able to identify is a huge lack, a huge lack in the content. Um, if you look at the average uh, ratios of websites to 
population in the world, it's one to ten. Uh, in the English-speaking world, it's one to three. So th every three people on average have a website. In the Arabic market, it's less than 300. So there's a huge need for creating uh, six, seven million websites at least to close that gap. Um, it, it, looking at the region's need and looking at the entrepreneurs that we in, we've invested in, you know, as a VC fund, we saw an opportunity. And by the way, one thing I just want to mention about Al Bawadir, we work as any other venture capital fund. You know, we look at the team, we look at the potential for an exit, high growth. The only one thing that we have, the only limitation that we have is that we can invest in companies that at the time of the investment are at least 50% owned by a minority Arab in Israel. Um, but the market is huge. The, they address, these entrepreneurs address a market of over 350 million Arabic speakers. Now, the advantage that they have is that they're growing and living in a developed ecosystem, which they can leverage. And at the same time, better than anybody else, they understand the cultural, uh, 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 the culture and the, uh, uh, the mindset of the region that they're addressing. So uh, in terms of cloning, uh, we, we've, we've actually invested in portfolio companies in the internet uh, area where, where they're doing a lot of similar things that have been done by multinational players, um, localizing it to meet the needs of the, regional, the region itself. But, you know, they're very similar. The idea has been proven. And, yeah, we, we took the idea and we uh, went on forth with it. Thank you. Good to hear. Um, what we have, that is... Arab entrepreneurs, in a way, and uh, uh, Dr. Abdullah, oh, Abdullah Malek Al-Jaber uh, calls uh, the firm um, that he represents Arab Renewer. And so th that title has been taken, and uh, very much uh, interested in hearing uh, uh, what, what you are doing, uh, where are the differences, and uh, what are your future prospects, and is Rocket Internet a partner for you, a potential? Um, thank you. Um, Arab Noor is a, a new word in the dictionary, the English dictionary. It's a merger between Arab entrepreneur, so we sliced part of the entrepreneur and then we put it together so it became Arab Arab Noor. Um, it could mean the light, it could mean entrepreneurship, but it's all positive meaning, meanings. Um, well, um, where I come from is a little bit different, you know. Um, my colleagues mentioned about uh, the Queen and uh, Bawad. There were, there were um, money available from, from the government, and there's an ecosystem um, in, in Israel uh, with chief scientists with a heavy budget, with, with the grants up to 85%, and VC funds, and Ayuzma, uh, that's almost 10 years old. Um, also, uh, the experience in Holland with SPC and VC funds and seed funds. Well, the situation is, is um, a little bit more difficult and, and different. Um, uh, you know, Palestine, uh, the situation, if, if you want to be uh, diplomatic, is, is not a normal situation where you don't have, even though thanks to DLD they recognize it as a full country, they say Palestine, so uh, at least this is just a, a word, it doesn't have really the full meaning of a country um, because you know, maybe you'll be shocked until now there's no 3G, um, not allowed in the Palestinian territories in Palestine, so you only have GSM, so, which means there is a lot of limitations on the internet. Uh, and as you know, without full access to internet, technology cannot really um, function. That's a major limitation in, when it comes to technology. Um, now, you don't have a, a functioning government in terms of budget, in terms, you know, they barely uh, can pay the salaries for the employees, and uh, thanks to the EU, they bought a lot of money in terms of uh, direct support to the budget uh, of, of, the, of the government to pay the salaries. So, you know, the, the situation is, is a little bit uh, uh, um, very challenging, and when you want to start with doing, um, building an ecosystem for entrepreneurship or startups, um, you know, all the um, elements uh, to make it successful, that are usually available uh, in any country, pick a country, Turkey, uh, Jordan, um, Israel, wherever, they're not there. So the only way you could start is a crazy way, um, which what we did um, three years ago, um, we decided to, you know, to go into this direction and start uh, 
um, uh, investing in startups. Um, if you go four or five years ago in the Arab world and you say an angel investor, that term did not exist. People would not understand what an angel investor uh, means. If you say uh, startup, if you say um, an angel network, I mean, all these terms are, are quite recent and quite new. So to go and bring some seed funding to startups, um, you know, that, that looked like a, an impossible um, uh, mission. And uh, uh, to get money from uh, governments, that's also not the case. Um, so we started building our own ecosystem. Uh, we had our own physical place um, with our own money, private money. Um, and we started building the whole ecosystem from, from scratch, um, even paying and covering the costs that are usually the government responsibility in terms of uh, the incubation process, in terms of the support ecosystem um, that usually uh, comes from a chief scientist or a, a ministry of youth or whatever, or a donor. When we started, we did all of that from our own pockets. Um, at a later stage, we started having some uh, support from donors, mainly um, USAID, um, GIZ, and, and other uh, partners. Now we are talking also to some Dutch partners and Swedish partners who are supporting the uh, parts that are government responsibility. Um, uh, but the process has been extremely successful. Uh, we have invested until now into uh, 15 startups. Um, I, I would uh, dare to say that the 15 startups that, uh, that we have are considered today the cream of the cream of uh, entrepreneurship and startups in the Arab world, covering uh, payments, social media, uh, education, um, uh, business intelligence, um, uh, platforms for, uh, 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 for uh, all kind of mobile apps, uh, the, the, what we call smart solutions. And our target market, the, the, the business model that we have is very simple. Um, we are creating kitchens. And we know that um, the kitchens that we are creating um, are to basically cater for the real market. The real market is not uh, where the kitchens are. The kitchens that we have are in Jordan, in Palestine, and we are doing one in, in Morocco, and we have another kitchen in Canada. I'm, I'm Canadian as well. Uh, but the target market is the Gulf region. It's not really uh, Jordan or, or Palestine or Egypt for that matter. The, the real market uh, where the purchase power and the, f the figures that uh, Dr. Ahab talked about in terms of uh, uh, internet penetration, in terms of smartphone penetration, in terms of purchase power, you know, smartphone penetration in the Gulf is 85%. It's way higher than Europe and higher than the US. If you talk about uh, uh, games, uh, online games, Saudi Arabia is the largest single market in terms of how much money they spend on the uh, online games. So, so this is the real market and the purchase power is high, and the, uh, is, is high and this is our target market. What do we do? Very simple. Um, we have a full ecosystem where we have a physical space, which is our building. We have that in Amman, we have that in Ramallah, we have it in Dubai, and we have it in, in, in Canada. And as I said, soon we're having that in Morocco. Um, so we provide a full physical space uh, for the startups, um, fully equipped in terms of the mentorship network, in terms of legal support, uh, in terms of uh, financial auditing, you know, PricewaterhouseCoopers, they're our partners. We have the largest law firm uh, as our partner in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the region. So basically, we provide the startups with all what they need in terms of the, um, the, the, the support. Of course, um, we do what we call um, uh, real lifetime mentorship. We have a, a network of mentors. Uh, from around the region, we have 50 mentors from Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Dubai, Kuwait, etc. All these uh, mentors, they have a vested interest in the startups. We give equity for the, for, the, uh, for the mentors. And at the same time, these mentors occupy, see their positions where they are. So they help us in the third uh, task, which is door opening, opening doors for these startups to, uh, to basically make deals and meet potential uh, customers. And of course, we invest our ticket is in the range of uh, um, uh, $200,000, $220,000, but sometimes we invest more than $200,000. We go to three hundred and four hundred. dollars We did invest uh, three dollars or $400,000 in, in some startups. And the, the most important uh, offering we have in our ecosystem is our hub in Dubai. Uh, each startup that goes through our system automatically uh, gets a free zone registration in Dubai. They get visas, they get an office, 
and they get a full team, a full functioning team out of Dubai to help them uh, penetrate the Gulf market. That includes uh, events, functions, meetings, uh, information, introductions, uh, logistics, all what they want so that that startup would not have to worry about, you know, I want to have a meeting in, in Doha or a meeting in, in, in Riyadh. Uh, they will arrange all of this for the, uh, for the startups and they will always watch what's happening, what are the new initiatives, what are the new projects. Just to give you a small idea of the potential, um, in Dubai, there are three um, initiatives that um, uh, just been launched. First, the uh, Emir of Dubai, the Sheikh of Dubai, announced Dubai as a smart city and smart government, and, and he wants to have Dubai as the smartest city and the smartest government globally, and trust me, he will, he will do that. Second, he wants Dubai to, have, to be the hub of Islamic finance. You have more than a billion Muslims, and there's not really such a hub for Islamic finance, so you, he wants to make Dubai as a hub for Islamic finance, and they have the Expo 2020, which, which they just won, and they are also talking about the, the Olympiad, which is beyond, beyond the, um, the Expo 2020. So these are three major initiatives um, that would require humongous amount of innovative solutions and ideas and startups. Uh, so in terms of the demand, it's, it's amazing. Um, basically, it's, you need a super highway of all these uh, uh, startups to really ful fulfill the needs that are in one market, uh, which is Dubai. Plus, of course, that, that will open the door for the uh, rest of the um, uh, Arab countries. I think our focus is stand, uh, investing in uh, Arab startups, including, by the way, or investing in Arab Israelis. We have Arab Israeli startups, and we have also Palestinian startups. We have Jordanian startups. We have Egyptian startups. So we are investing in Arabic startups, not only uh, uh, Palestinian startups. But our, our, our target is Arab uh, uh, innovators are of smart kids that we plug uh, uh, them into the Arab Noor ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you. That was an interesting insight into an area that's, I guess, often overlooked. Um, all of us wouldn't sit today here without Laszlo. Laszlo was uh, having the idea, and then on the other hand, it's no surprise. Like the country that produced Rubik's Cube and uh, which people say if you go to a wheeling door is like the only one who can uh, enter behind you and leave before you, you must be Hungarian. I'm sure uh, Laszlo could demonstrate that. And um, in 2011, uh, um, he created the idea of the U EU um, Israel Innovation Summit. And that was at that time, I thought, very daring and bold uh, innovation, because on the one hand, you had this sparkling intelligence, uh, well-educated population, um, lots of full new ideas, bright hopes, globally uh, interested, and on the other hand, you had Europe um, invested into all technologies, uh, into a deep crisis. But you have said this morning, uh, the usual career is big firm, small firm, not for profit. In a crisis, the big firms are usually no, not available. So if a country is in a crisis, I always say, take a second look, because these are the best opportunities. So go and invest now into Greece. Go and invest now into other countries that are struggling, because the young people, the potential, the entrepreneurs, they will come out now. Uh, and uh, they are ready to shine. Not all of them will leave, but they are ready to, uh, to invest into. So I'm very interested in Laszlo, who in 2011 thought of this brilliant event, is what is the future and does Rocket Internet have a future? How is, how's, will there be a EU-Israel, uh, North American-US triangle? Uh, uh, and will that be exclusive? Um, how, how is the world going to look like, the VC world, in 2020, 2025? 